Hello and welcome to a week 14 edition of the Kama Sutra Show. It is called the Kama Sutra Show because we'll be going position by position through Sunday's main slate on both DraftKings and FanDuel. As always, I am joined by everyone's favorite hippie. He connects to his internet through hemp. He wears Birkenstocks only. He shaved his head for some unknown reason. It is Andrew Wiggins. Andrew, what's going on? Feeling good with the short hair. Just threw on the new T Swift album, the first song. You know what it's called? Oh God, this is embarrassing. Willow. So you know that's that's a good sign, boys. That's my daughter's name. We got some good luck going into the weekend here. Good for you. Father narrative, new father narrative. It's been good for crypto. Has not been as good for DFS. Evan, Evan Walters is in the house. What's going on, buddy? What's up? Uh, big betting week. Uh, Lots and lots of takes, so I hope you guys are ready to fire. I got the uh, DK uh, loaded up on the, you know, along with the Zoom, ready to crush it. Uh, by the way, guys, we have a sponsor for this podcast. Want to let you know, this podcast is sponsored by Establish and Run NBA. Yes, that's right. Establish and Run NBA is sponsoring this podcast. Season starts on December twenty second. Wiggins, Leone. Dinkmeyer, Gallagher have been working around the clock to get ready for the NBA season. It's like, I, I don't know how to put it exactly, but I, I think if you think of every Sunday NFL main slate in the context that that happens every single day in NBA, that's what's going to be happening. Projections, updating through lock, the last game lock, top plays, live show, et cetera. And so, you know, I, I thought it should be more than what it's priced at, which is two ninety nine ninety nine, considering there's seven months of seven day a week main slates like we have for NFL. But two ninety nine ninety nine is the price. Hope you guys check it out. Um, we're ready to go, man. It's exciting. So yeah, and hope you're following uh, Established Run NBA on Twitter too for updates there. Okay, let's get to this slate. This slate is really interesting because while guys are priced full, such as Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill. Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, while they're priced full, they're also in really good spots. And so it, it's a it's a spot, it's a slate where people are going to be trying to jam these guys in that are priced at eight, seven, at nine, four, at nine, three on DraftKings. And then FanDuel, I mean, even FanDuel might be tighter than DraftKings, which we, which we almost never say. So I think that is the backdrop of the slate. Let's get to it with the quarterback position. And there's certainly no great bargains to the quarterback position. And I want to start at the top because I was debating myself today between Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson. I was saying to myself, well, God, I mean, Patrick Mahomes matchup is not great. You know, I mean, Miami Dolphins will play great perimeter pass game defense all season. They're sixth best in our DVP stuff against quarterbacks. However, Russ has this matchup against the Jets. I mean, God, everybody flames the Jets. I mean, the Jets are obviously one of the best possible matchups for a quarterback. The issue is, are they going to let Russ cook versus we know that the Chiefs are always going to let Patrick Mahomes cook. So after much debate, after looking at a lot of stuff, I my lean was if the prices are the same, I prefer Patrick Mahomes. Evan, I'm curious what your thought is between Russ versus Mahomes, knowing the matchups, knowing the pass rate versus expectation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Definitely Mahomes there. Uh, I think that. You know the Dolphins do have a really good pass defense. Their their cornerbacks though are, are really the the engine behind that. Well, they they're, they're really aggressive blitzing um, because they trust their secondary so much. And even even Brian Flores is like you know he's he came up as a, a DB's coach, and um, you know they 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 trust their secondary, so they blitz at one of the highest rates in the NFL. And that you know that that's a great combination to be able to have. Uh, however, Patrick Mahomes uh, shreds blitzes and Tyreek Hill and, you know, the, the big perimeter corners for the Dolphins, Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. I mean, they're big physical man to man corners like Tyreek Hill can just run right around them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Miko Hardman can can run right around, around them. Watkins, I think, you know, can even get separation uh, against those guys like the, the Chiefs are just built to be matchup proof. And then in the middle of the field, you know, Travis Kelsey all day. My my biggest concern for Patrick Mahomes is does this sort of evolve into a low scoring affair? Uh, because, you know, I mean, to a, he, he had a pretty good box score last week, but I mean, they're, they're not like pouring point points on anybody. Um, 
he is uh, one of 11 on passes, uh, aims uh, 20 plus air yards downfield. You know, he's not getting the ball enough to Devontae Parker. They've had some moments with Mike Jacecki, but, you know, Mike Jacecki is, you know, he's a Jekyll and Hyde week to week player. And, um, you know, I, could this devolve into a, a, a situation that we saw similarly against the, the Broncos where Patrick Mahomes wound up being like the quarterback 15 on the week and, you know, it was what, 22 to 16 or something like that, you know, um, I, that would be my biggest concern on Patrick Mahomes, but straight up, uh, I, you know, definitely give me him over Russ this week. Um, at the same time, I don't know how the Jets are going to be able to cover DK Metcalf and, um, and Tyler Lockett. And then I would like to know, I mean, where are you guys slotting Aaron Rodgers? Like, I think mm-hmm. that Aaron Rodgers at Detroit uh, is, you know, may, maybe the, the best quarterback play of, of them all this week. Yeah, that's the thing. On FanDuel, Rodgers is actually the most expensive out of the three, only by $200, but he's still the most expensive. But yeah, I think Rodgers is in the conversation as well, especially on DraftKings, where dollars obviously matter a lot, and Rodgers is 600 cheaper. We have Mahomes, I believe, 0.5 ahead of Russ in projection. Wiggins, what are you thinking about the top of the quarterback tier? Yeah, 0.5 ahead, and then Rodgers is 1.5 or 1.4 behind Mahomes. So, I, you know, I think on DraftKings, I think I prefer Rodgers with the discount. I mean, he sure looks like a guy to meet his gun in for MVP. Mahomes is the favorite right now, but Rodgers is pretty safely in second. And if he keeps playing like he is, like he's making a pretty strong argument for it. So uh, I do think that matters to him. So I think they're throwing more than they normally would, and he has over the last few years. Great matchup. You know, it's a spot where they can easily run, but – he's just thrown to Devonte Adams in the red zone. So, so much. So with the price discount on DraftKings, I, he's, he's our number one ranked quarterback right now. Fano, I'm struggling, man. Uh, I don't know if I want to spend the nine K for those guys. It's, you know, I don't know. It seems like a lot. I don't think I would play Rogers for more than Mahomes. I do prefer Mahomes to Russ. I think Russ is going to be a very good tournament play this week. People just, they're not playing him. And, you know, I think at some point he's going to have another good game. I stand to reason. Uh, so I don't know, man, I, I'm, I'm struggling a lot on FanDuel this week. It's, it's an unusual week. Usually you, you can get in there and FanDuel and find something you really like, uh, where I think on DraftKings, cause you can slot in some of these cheap wide receivers, <laughs> the, the jets guys, and we'll get to that. Uh, but that lets you spend up at a lot of other spots and you just don't really have that relief over on FanDuel. So it's, it's a difficult slate there. Yeah. Well, I want to get to the cheaper quarterbacks in a second. I want to get Evan's specific take on Russ and Rogers because this whole Russ isn't cooking movement. Well, I don't know, man. He's still throwing above expectation, not at the same rate they were throwing at before. The question is, do you need to throw over expectation against the Jets? And then on Rodgers, I mean, it's very clear when they get to the red zone at this point, their pass rate over expectation in the red zone has been absolutely massive. And Aaron, you've seen Aaron Jones needs like 75-yard touchdowns to get there because when they get inside the 10, it's throw, throw, throw to Devontae Adams, to Big Bob Tanyan, et cetera. So we talked about Mahomes. What do you think about Russ and Rodgers? And how would you compare those two, Evan? I mean, let's be clear. I think that all three of these guys are going to smash, including Mahomes and Rodgers and Wilson. I mean, I think they're all going to have good games. It's just, you know, trying to decide between three awesome plays. Um, I'm not so much as worried about like the let. I I just I think that Russell Wilson is going to be highly efficient against the Jets. I I don't know how the Jets are going to be able to cover DK, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I wish that the Seahawks had, you know, another couple of weapons that were stepping up. See, that's what Aaron Rodgers has right now. He's got Devontae Adams, but he's also got big Bob Tanya in an awesome spot. Aaron Jones in an awesome spot. You know, even MVS, who's been highly inconsistent and usually more bust than boom, he's in a very good spot. I know that Matt LaFleur said they want to limit Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard played 70% of the snaps last week. Mm-hmm. So that's not much of a limitation uh, as far as I'm concerned, and he is in a very good spot as well. Um, so I think that, you know, playing indoors, uh, playing, you know, against a, a defense that doesn't rush the passer, doesn't have its frontline corners, um, and, you know, with a bunch of ancillary weapons for Green Bay stepping up lately, that's why I would have Aaron Rodgers ranked ahead of both Mahomes and uh, Russ this week. Okay. The number four and number five spots at quarterback this week are interesting. My number four, I think, would be Justin Herbert, but I can see the case for Tom Brady. And Evan and I talked about this on Tuesday, the spot for the Bucs as they come out of their 
buy is very, very, very favorable. Kind of circle the wagons, the Bucks can, and get a home spot against the Vikings defense, which can't rush the passer and is so young in the secondary. It seems like, to me, a great spot for Tom Brady to really get going here. Still, it's hard for me to ignore Justin Herbert against the Falcons defense, which has been such a pass funnel all season. And Justin Herbert played like, I mean, the Chargers played such a bad game last week, like the stone bottom of their range last week. I think it's a bounce back spot for Justin Herbert. So I would rank it fourth would be Justin Herbert for me. And then fifth would probably be Brady. I can see why people might want Brady ahead. Evan, how would you compare? What do you think about Herbert's spot this week and compare him to Tom Brady? Yeah, I like Herbert's spot. Um, another thing working in, in his favor is the Falcons have giving up a, a lot of rushing yards to quarterbacks. And Justin Herbert has not been a prolific rusher this year, but he's definitely got that like in his toolbox. And Keenan Allen is healthy in an awesome spot. Mike Williams is healthy in an awesome spot. Hunter Henry is healthy in an awesome spot. Um, you know, Eckler is in an awesome spot. So all of his weapons are, you know, potential eruption candidates against Atlanta. I wish that Julio was playing in this game. I think that would be better for almost everybody in the game. I know that Ridley has been, I don't know. We'll talk about Ridley in a little bit, but I, I, I would would have preferred for Julio to play for everybody in this game. So I think I would lean slightly toward Brady, but, you know, teams coming off buys, we talked about this a good deal. Teams coming off buys tend to be like more volatile, like they'll play at the at their absolute peak or sometimes they can play uh, at their basement um, coming off buys. They just tend to be a little bit more uh, volatile than, than usual. And um, that that's that adds a little bit of risk to Brady's projection, uh, but I I mean at the end of the day, like I, I took the the Bucks uh, the over on their team total, which was at twenty nine and a half. I mean the Vikings ruled out Eric Kendricks, like their defensive play caller. Um, you know they I I think that the Bucks are going to be one of those teams coming out of their bye that play that does play at its peak. So do I, uh, Wiggins. The problem is that Herbert and Brady are priced kind of close to Rodgers and Russ and Mahomes and those guys, how viable do you think the mid-range is here? And I, I don't even, I, I hesitate to even call it the mid-range because Brady is 6,900 and Herbert is 6,800. To me, that's not even really the mid-range. That's kind of the higher range. But yeah, what do you think about some of these secondary quarterback plays? We haven't mentioned Kyler yet. Yeah, I think they're more tournament plays. Leone and I were talking about this before because uh, he had Brady maybe like a point and a point and a half ahead of Herbert. And I just thought that didn't really feel right. You know, the biggest thing he pointed out to me is that it's the difference in the team totals. It's 29 and a half versus 23 and a half. Uh, but he did make some adjustments. I think he brought um, Brady's uh, yard per attempt down a little bit. And now they're roughly the same. We still have Brady a little bit ahead, 0.3 ahead. Uh, so, you know, like pretty equivalent plays and, and the ownership. I think we've got them pretty similar as well. So I don't know. It's close to call or close call on, on FanDuel. You're getting a big discount on Brady. So I think Brady's more of a viable play over on FanDuel at 7.8 K. Yeah, definitely on FanDuel. Brady comes in cheaper. I want to talk about Kyler for a second, Evan, because friend of the show, Steven Ruiz wrote an article and we've talked a lot about Kyler's struggles this year. And I think what Kyler said is true. Like, you know, I know you guys, he, what he said was basically, I know you guys want me to run a lot. I know I've been effective running, but the defense now is daring me to hand the ball off. And so there's not spots for me to run. Like, what am I supposed to do? They're daring me to hand the ball off to Kenyon Drake on read options, et cetera. How much of you think, do you think that that is legit? And how much do you think of what Mr. Ruiz pointed out in his article is true about what's going on with Kyler right now? Yeah. Um, I, another uh, factor that has been thrown around by uh, Mike Lombardi, longtime NFL uh, front office guy is that, uh, the, the fact that the that defenses are like able to keep him like sort of confined to the pocket that they've been doing a much better job of that recently. Uh, it forces him to like see over the offensive lineman and dude is small, like, you know, and, and so it, when, when his vision is impaired, you know, that puts limitations on their passing offense, like, you know, uh, again, only be only using Deandre hip uh, Hopkins on like seven yard hitch routes, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, where he's got to like, you know, he, like he can see over there, but he can't like see down the middle. I mean, they're, they, they don't, they're not getting any production in the middle of the field uh, with the exception of a, a few like, you know, chunk plays from Dan Arnold every, every now and again. Um, so yeah, it, it has definitely limited their, their passing offense. I mean, I, uh, you know, they're, they're playing one of the best defense in the league this week. And I, I, I don't think it's going to be a big week for Kyler. Yeah. And Kyler's going to come in. I mean, if you would have told me a month ago that Kyler would be 7,200, I'd be like, okay, how much can I bet on Kyler? 
Um, but it's a lot's changed. So I think he's going to be one for the GPP bros. And I'm sure that Leone and Dink will talk about him tomorrow. But I do think Kyler is definitely in play for tournaments. He's priced relatively closely to Aaron Rodgers and Russ, which will make him certainly low owned. And by the way, I have not had a chance to update the ownership projections yet since the injury report came out. It's 920 on Friday. I'll be doing that right after the show.